Okay, now you've installed Skype, so the first thing you need to do is start it up. So we go over here to the Applications folder and open that up, and scrolling down, we find Skype, and we just click on the icon, and it opens up. The first thing it asks us for is to put in a Skype name, and if you haven't got an account already, uh, you can you need to uh, start an account. So what we do is right underneath the Skype name it says don't have a Skype name. You click on that. It opens up another window where you can put in a Skype name. I'm just going to use simplecyber.ca and uh, then it asks you for a password then it asks you to repeat that password. This is so that they make sure you really do know the password. Now, then it asks you for an email address. Type that in. Then it has a number of uh, questions that it asks you. Um, it asks you if you've read and accept all of the uh, licenses and user agreements. Just click that. Nobody ever reads them, but if you want to and don't mind all that legalese, you can go ahead. You can ask it to remember your name and password on this computer. That's If this is your home computer, that's a good idea. Uh, launch Skype when you, when you log into the Mac OS X. I usually don't do this because uh, I like to control when it's on. Otherwise, it has all sorts of annoying pop-ups every time you somebody who comes on that you know it pops up and tells you, oh, somebody's on that you know. Um, and you may or may not want that. It also use up, uses up system resources, so if you have don't have very much memory it's a good idea to leave it off and just put it on when you want it and then you can the last one is contact me with new features and services and other Skype stuff um, they, they're not too annoying they don't send a lot so I usually leave that one on and then once you've done that you click create and it starts to try and sign in this can take a little while because what it's doing right now is checking its database to find out um, whether that your Skype name has been used before. Okay, and once it does, it opens up. You get that funny little sound that happens every time you uh, start up Skype. And your uh, Skype contacts window opens up. Now, uh, once you're here, um, what do you do? Okay, well, the first thing you need to do is look for contacts. So if you go up to the top of the screen and under contacts, click on that and s click on search for people on Skype. That's one way. If you already know of somebody who's on there, you can type in their name and uh, or their email address and they'll show up. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is um, importing your contacts. And what this does is it will open it up and it'll ask you if you want to let it to search your address book. And so what it does then is it searches your address book for email addresses that uh, are on the Skype listing. And then everybody that you know who's on Skype will show up. That's the easiest way to get a whole bunch of uh, people that you might want to talk to onto um, into your Skype. So here we go. It's found 245 addresses and now it's just running through those and checking them out. This can take a little while. And once it's finished scanning your address book, it pops up with a list of all the people that are in your address book that currently have Skype names. Um, then you can go through and uh, select or deselect ones that you want to keep in your uh, Skype address book. Once you've done that, then it pops up a little thing that allows you to, uh, that sends a message to the people that you selected uh, saying, please allow me to see you when you're online. Uh, I'm going to click cancel because I already have those people in my address book, so I don't then asks you whether you want to import the phone numbers because using Skype if you pay you can have access to calling people on their cell phones or on their home phones and it's pretty good if you're calling long distance because it's about two cents a minute when you're calling long distance so it's cheaper than most long distance plans definitely cheaper than a cell phone 
Okay, so once you have all of your contacts imported, the next thing you have to do to make sure that everything works properly is down near the bottom there will be address that uh, Skype puts in called the Skype test call. If you click on that, a little window pops up and what you want to do is click the little green uh, telephone handset and what this will do is dial up Skype and well I'll just do it and you'll see. Hello, welcome to Skype call testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. So, just follow the instructions. Um, load up, or uh, say a few things, uh, hello, and test the sound levels, talk a little louder, a little quieter, whatever. So, just follow the instructions. Um, load up, or uh, say a few things, uh, hello, and test the sound levels, talk a little louder, a little... If you are able to hear your own voice, then you have configured Skype correctly. If you hear this message, but not your own voice, then something is wrong with your audio recording settings. Please check your microphone and microphone settings or visit skype.com for more help. Thank you for using the Skype call testing service. Goodbye. Okay, as you heard, my, my computer is configured correctly. If you had a problem, the best way to correct it is just to go over to the little apple in the corner, click on that, and click on System Preferences open up the system preferences window and under hardware right at the very end is sound click on the sound and there you will see um, if you click on the input button it may open up on sound effects or output but if you click on the input button up here at the top you want to make sure that internal microphone is highlighted and then you want to check your volume control down here and once that's all all together you can put on ambient so noise reduction which is a good idea when you're doing Skype calls anyway because it cuts down on background room noise and uh, then you want to also configure your uh, your output volume for your speakers because that could also be what was wrong so make sure that both of these are up about a little over half is where I have mine and then try the Skype call again and everything should work okay now you're done with that now it's time to start calling people so all you do is find if you look over here on the side you'll see there's a bunch of icons they all mean different things usually if you just hover your mouse over it it will tell you what's up this one says that Don Rushworth is computers on but he's offline uh, this one here says uh, not available uh, beware of the jub jub bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch and uh, other ones uh, yeah so and when people are online it'll show up as a bright green thing with a little check mark in it like it does down here on the Skype test call that's your uh, getting up and running on Skype video